Cambridge, one of the most elite universities in the world, with over 120 Nobel Prizes, thousands of alumni going on to be CEOs of major startups and producing 14 different Prime Ministers, including the first ever Prime Minister. It has a legacy of producing only the best, well above nearly every other university. But is this legacy now under threat? Is Cambridge still the holy grail for aspiring mathematicians, or has the crown been passed to somebody else? With its rich history of legendary mathematicians and a unique academic system, Cambridge has long been revered as the best place to study maths. But in today's rapidly evolving educational landscape, where cutting edge technology and interdisciplinary approaches are continuously reshaping the field, can it maintain its prestigious status? Join me as we dive into the strengths, challenges and global competition that define Cambridge's place in the world of research and industry. Let's find out if it's still at its peak or are some other universities looking more promising. So to start off with, let's have a look at the history of Cambridge in mathematics. Now, Cambridge has a long-standing reputation of amazing mathematicians. Figures like Sir Isaac Newton, G.H. Hardy and Alan Turing have all done a lot of work and contributed to this massive legacy. And the history of the mathematical tripos, which is Cambridge's degree, is one of the oldest mathematics examinations in the world, and it has set Cambridge apart in terms of both its prestige and its difficulty. Now, if we compare Cambridge to other top institutions, Cambridge's approach is much more theory-driven, with less of a focus on applications like coding and stuff like that, compared to other universities like MIT, where students may encounter a more balanced mix of pure and applied mathematics. However, this intense theoretical focus is one reason why Cambridge has always been on top and has always been highly thought of by purist mathematicians. We see this when we look at the current QS World Rankings from 2024, where Cambridge is ranked second for mathematics, only just being topped by MIT. This is due to its high scores in both employability and research. However, if we look in general, not just at mathematics, Cambridge doesn't even come top in the UK. It's being beaten by both Imperial College London and Oxford. Why are Cambridge students always thought of as a step above the rest? Well, Cambridge sets the bar high for mathematicians, making sure that they only accept the best. They do this by requiring STEP, the sixth term examination paper, which is the entry requirement or entry exam for all students wanting to study maths. It's one thing that really sets Cambridge apart is its reliance on these STEP papers. The STEP papers are designed to be extremely challenging and require deep problem solving skills and creativity. Many students who generally excel in the traditional A-levels or international equivalents really struggle when it comes to STEP. It's seen as a bit of a gatekeeper for the tripos. And it means that only the most capable students are admitted. While other prestigious universities, especially in the US, rely on standardised testing like the SAT and the ACT, it's more of a holistic approach and doesn't really go into depth of maths. And in the UK, there's nothing really beyond A-levels for most universities. So Cambridge's reliance on these step papers places a high demand on students early on, on their mathematical ability. Few other universities actually have anywhere near as difficult as an exam as step, making their admissions process quite unique. Cambridge University is also one of the few universities in the UK that has a proper interview process. A lot of universities don't actually require interviews, so this means that Cambridge can assess whether students will be the right fit for their university courses, meaning again that they can set the bar quite high for this. Let's have a look at the actual course, the Mathematical Tripos. The Mathematical Tripos is renowned for its extreme difficulty and depth. It covers an enormous range of topics in both pure and applied mathematics, with a structure that challenges students to engage with the material far beyond what would normally be seen in a standard undergraduate programme. The Tripos has a three-year undergraduate, followed by a one-year master's degree, which is called the MMath. The exams are notorious for their difficulty, and they include advanced topics like differential geometry, quantum mechanics, and number theory. Because of this difficulty, Cambridge, along with Oxford, are the only universities in the UK that upgrade your bachelor's degree to a master's degree seven years after you start. Now, the seven years is a bit of a weird tradition, but it's because of this difficulty that Cambridge is able to do this. They teach the tripos to a level of a master's course. As for the teaching, Cambridge Maths has a very hands-off approach to its teaching style, with very low contact hours compared to other subjects, around 10 hours of lectures and two hours of one-on-two -on -two supervisions. This leaves a lot of spare time for students. However, in my opinion, this isn't necessarily a good thing. To compensate for the lack of contact hours, the students are given many very difficult problems each week, which sucks up nearly all of their spare time. What the university aims to do is great. They give you the space and time to truly struggle with the problems. This really develops your problem-solving skills and intuition for maths, 
with you spending time trying many different methods, different approaches, trying to develop a full understanding of the topics and the problems you're set. As with all that time, you get to test different things, see what works, see what doesn't. Your skills as a mathematician generally do increase greatly from this. While it does achieve this, sometimes you can just feel lost. You don't understand the problems and you can't make any progress. In practice, it also increases stress levels and students find they're often unable to solve problems at all. And they just have a lack of a support system to help. Whereas when they came from schools and colleges, they had easy access to a clear support structure. These students also were used to getting nearly full marks on every paper they sat. And now they can be struggling to even start problems. This can be really disheartening for a lot of students. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, in the next section I'm going to be talking about depression. If you want to skip past that, go to one of these timestamps above. A study from the TAB, which is a student-run news forum, found that around 21% of students had been diagnosed with depression, with a further 25% suffering undiagnosed, making a total of 46% of the student population that are suffering from depression, which is, is really, really high. Putting it into context at the time of this video, around 16% of the UK suffers from depression according to the Office for National Statistics. Comparing the two, you're talking about 16% and 46%. It's quite bad. Cambridge really needs to address this and find a way to help students work through their struggles. Looking into what's actually taught at Cambridge, the mathematical tripos is known for its rigorous theoretical framework. While students engage deeply with abstract concepts and proofs, there is comparatively less emphasis on applied mathematics or coding. This focus equips students with a strong foundational knowledge, but may leave them less prepared for practical applications in fields like data science, computational mathematics, or software development. Although some courses do introduce computational aspects of mathematics, the primary focus remains more on the theoretical understanding. Many students may not receive any extensive training in programming languages commonly used in maths, such as Python, R, or MATLAB. We do actually do a bit of MATLAB, but not very much. This lack of emphasis can hinder graduates looking to enter fields that require strong programming or data manipulation skills. This is what I immediately found when I moved into industry. I had the basic knowledge, but I didn't have the skills to actually apply it, so I had to develop these myself. Now, universities like Imperial College London offer courses that blend maths with engineering and technology, providing students with hands-on experience in applying mathematical theories through coding or practical projects. This can give Imperial graduates an advantage when applying for jobs in tech and engineering sectors. Cambridge graduates might find that they're a bit of a disadvantage when they're applying for jobs in fields that prioritise the more practical skills and the coding expertise. For instance, industries such as finance, technology, data analysis, all of these are increasingly requiring employees to combine their maths knowledge with programming and application skills. Without this exposure, some graduates may need to undergo either additional training or self-study to acquire these extra skills. They might do it before graduation or after graduation, but this generally slows down their transition into work. Now, as a bit of a potential solution for some of these graduates to address that gap, students interested in the more practical side should seek additional coursework, internships. Internships are really useful or projects outside of their course studies. Engaging in something like a coding bootcamp or an online course in programming or just collaborative projects can help bridge that gap between the theoretical knowledge and the practical application. Looking at the research that is done at Cambridge, it still remains a leader in mathematical research with both a focus on pure and applied mathematics. The key research areas that they're currently looking into is number theory, combinatorics, algebraic geometry and mathematical physics. The university is also home to the Isaac Newton Institute for Mathematical Sciences, which is a global hub for advanced research and collaboration. It hosts programmes and conferences that attract leading mathematicians from all around the world to talk about many different topics. Cambridge also has won several field medals. Field medals are often known as the Nobel Prize of Mathematics. It's one of the most prestigious awards you can get in mathematics. They've won five of them in total, coming again just after the likes of Princeton and Harvard. Now, this is the final part, but it's one that some people might think of as a bit more controversial. The name Cambridge carries significant weight, not only within the UK, but globally. It's got a long-standing history of academic excellence and innovation, and has established itself as more of a brand that's synonymous with a great education. Graduates are often viewed as being among the best and brightest in their fields. It can provide a competitive edge in the job market. And when you speak to anyone, whether it's friends, employees, colleagues, and you say that you've been to Cambridge, the first thing that comes out of their mouths is, oh, you must be clever. This fact just opens doors. It opens doors that might not be possible for others simply because you've been to Cambridge. 
For starters, employers often regard Cambridge graduates highly due to the university's rigorous academic standards. They know that students who've gone through this must be resilient, self-motivated, good at problem solving, and able to work independently. According to the Graduate Outcome Survey, a significant proportion of Cambridge graduates secure employment within six months of graduation, often in very highly competitive fields such as finance, technology, academia and research. The brand recognition associated with Cambridge increases the amount of job opportunities, networking possibilities, and often can even lead to higher starting salaries than other universities. Okay, so to conclude, we've said a lot of positives and negatives about Cambridge. But Cambridge strengths generally lie in its deep-rooted tradition of theoretical mathematics. It has a great alumni network and it has great research output and research opportunities. These continue to make it one of the most prestigious places to study mathematics in the world. However, modern developments in the field, especially in the applied mathematics side, any data science, machine learning, these have highlighted the importance of other universities like MIT, Stanford, Imperial College London, which have evolved and have put more of an emphasis on the applied computational side to meet these new demands. So, final verdict. It's not going to be as easy as a yes or a no, but if your primary interest lies in pure mathematics and abstract theory, Cambridge still ranks among the best in the world. It's got a rigorous academic system and unparalleled history. However, if you're looking for a more practical or interdisciplinary approach, especially one with connections to industry, so if you want a job straight afterwards, other universities such as Imperial College London, Warwick, St Andrews or any of the American universities may be better for you. In essence, Cambridge's place at the top is no longer unchallenged, but it still remains a unique place for mathematics, where you can focus completely on the understanding of the theory. My fourth video now, so I thought I'd ask a few questions of you, but for those interested in pursuing a mathematics degree, would you prefer a university with a strong theoretical focus like Cambridge, or one with a more applied and interdisciplinary approach? And if you've studied or are currently studying at Cambridge or any of the other universities, what was your experience like? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please leave a comment letting me know. I hope you consider subscribing for more content and thank you very much. See you in the next one.